Now, you might see my hoodie and think that I absolutely hate LUTs. Nothing could be further from the truth. As a matter of fact, I don't remember the last time I worked on a professional project where I didn't use LUTs. However, I have a huge problem with how LUTs are sold and used by the masses. You're promised to get Hollywood looks with a single click when you buy a LUT pack. I don't give a how good the LUT is. If you apply it on a shot filmed in your bathroom under room lighting, it ain't gonna look like this. So what this false advertisement does is that it turns you into a LUT junkie. You're dope sick. You spend countless hours auditioning LUTs with zero context or direction. And that is the most common mistake that every beginner makes when using LUTs. Instead, you should do the following. Let's say I'm asked to create a look inspired by the Wolf of Wall Street. First step would be to examine the footage and see if it's shot similarly and is even possible. As colorists or creators, it's our job to inform producers, directors, whoever is in charge of the project, what can and can't be done. My next step would be to get a cup of coffee, get in my detective mode because it's time to do some research. Let's go to IMDb and type in The Wolf of Wall Street, then search for text specs and bingo. It used Kodak 250D and 500T film negatives and it was printed on Kodak 2383. Now let's go to shotdeck.com and find a frame that best represents what we're working with. This one will do nicely. Let's download it and bring it in Resolve by dragging it into our gallery stills. All right, we got everything to get started. Make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you can be notified about the future content. Let's jump in. So this is shot in Aria Mira in Log C and after the conversion, our footage looks like this. So this is Log Direct 709, as you can see in my color space transform. And let's jump right in. And I've already created a simple six node node tree. And uh, I'm going to take you through what's really happening. So the first node is going to be noise reduction. And the second one is going to be our film negative, which is going to be the Kodak 250D. And then we're going to do our adjustments here in these two nodes. And then we're going to move on to applying film grain and halation. Basically the texture that makes this look what this is. And then finally, we're going to apply the FPE, which is film print emulation. In this case, it's going to be Kodak 2383. So I generated 3D LUTs for Kodak 250D and Kodak 2383 that you can download when you sign up for my free webinar. Instead of watching 20 separate videos and wasting time, this training curates everything you need to know to get started and hit the ground running when it comes to color grading. Link is in the description and up top. I highly encourage you to sign up. Let's get back to the video. So let's start by turning this on and you can see that it's doing a DaVinci wide gamut to Rec. 709 conversion. And that's why everything does look proper even on our scopes, but we got long ways to go, right? And then when I click our film negative, which is Kodak 250D, all of a sudden it looks really dark and not at all where we need to go. That is totally okay. What these are gonna do is that they're going to give us the look DNA that makes this look, okay? So once we adjust our primaries, we should be in the ballpark. We should have the film negative richness in our image that is really hard to get otherwise. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go under my look adjustment node and under my HDR palette, I'm just gonna start raising it up. So let's pull it up about, about a stop. And let's just kind of look at the two and uh, eyeball it, what's really happening. Some of the things that you have to keep in mind is that in this shot, we see that he's getting a window light directly on him and it's super diffused, okay? And uh, that's not something that's that we got going on here, okay? So we got light coming in, but it's stopping right here, okay? So that's majority of the light. And this light is also tungsten. It's really, really warm. That's coming through the window compared to like what's happening here, which is basically the same color temperature here and then the fill light that they're using inside the room. So we got one color temperature fill lights happening and then we got this really, really warm light coming through the window. So we're not gonna create something artificial here, okay? We're gonna stick with what we can do to capture the essence of these tones instead of just like being a straight up like ripping this grade. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my offset in my HDR palette and start raising it up a little bit. Okay. So 
some of the things that I see here when I look at this grade in here is that there's a lot of orange right here and we can confirm it in our vector scope too. And then our whites are pretty clean right up here. So you can see that. And let's just keep those things in mind and then go in and then adjust it, right? So like I need to warm it up a little bit and maybe I can put it somewhere around here. Let's pull this open and just put it next to each other and see what we're really doing. So I'm gonna kind of push it and then go up. And I'm gonna keep it somewhere around here. So if I go back and forth, let's switch this. We still got some ways to go in terms of the contrast of our image. So I'm gonna go in my primaries and what I wanna do here is I wanna lift my gamma up a little bit and then I wanna go under my lift and I wanna pull it down. And I'm just like looking for that really strong contrast like right here in our shadows because that's one of the things that we see here, right? Like, I mean, it like right here, it is pretty, pretty substantial, right? So I'm gonna just take my lift and I'm gonna pull it down. I'm gonna grab my gain and I'm gonna lift it up a little bit just to kind of give my image that punch. So again, look at his skin tones and the lighting contrast ratio, and then look at our guy right here. I feel like that would be a better example than looking at our main character who is evenly lit. So I would be focusing on this guy and then looking at Leonardo DiCaprio, and I feel like we're starting to get some of that essence in, okay? So we're coming a long, long way from where we started to where we are now. So again, I'm gonna pop that open, and I want you to just keep an eye right here. And all I wanna do is I wanna go under my gamma, and I wanna start putting some of that red that we see here, and I feel like we kinda just like nailed it. Like it was like a very, very subtle move that I made, and if I go and just pull it up, like you're starting to get the image in the right ballpark because again, let's look at our scopes here. So look at the colors, right? Those oranges and then uh, whites up top and look at our image. And you can even see it in the vector scope how it lines up exactly the same. Now, all these other colors, like this red right here and then her pink does not exist in this shot. Even this right here is like popping up like this orange and it's pretty stark. Um, and those are the colors that are coming through. So once again, we don't want to just do an amateur thing and start swinging hues and pulling colors back because this is literally our direction. OK, so if it's there, it's totally fine. One thing that I do want to control, though, is that even in the highlights here, I see that they're pretty controlled and you can even see it in the uh, waveform right here that kind of taps out around 896 and it doesn't go all the way to the top. And a lot of our issues are coming uh, from this window, like the light is pretty hot. So to control that, what we're going to do is we're going to create a custom window. So I'm gonna go here and create a gradient window. I'm gonna put it right here. I'm gonna hit Shift H so we can see what we're doing. And I'm gonna kind of pull it through like that. I'm gonna bring it down and kind of keep it the same shape, same angle I meant. So let's keep it somewhere around here like that. And I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna go under my HDR palette and all I wanna do is I wanna take my highlights and I wanna drop them. I wanna drop them about, let's just say three quarters of a stop and let's do before and after. And I think it does a pretty good job. Like even if you look at her hair, it looks a lot better. Another thing that I wanna do is I wanna just kind of pull some of the, the warmth out. So I'm just going to do something like that. So even if I do that, and if I go before and after, once again, there's a lot of magenta undertones here. And if you see, like I just took out this access yellow. And even like, if you look at her hair, it looks so much better and more realistic. Even like the sting that it takes off here and the highlights, it did all the right things. And even just if you look at the blinds, right, they, it cooled them off. So this is all the right things that we can expect from a window. And also our skin tones and everything is just so dialed in and how good it looks. I don't think we need to mess with it more. And then at that point, what I did is my tried and tested noise reduction parameters. So I just set the frame to one and then under temporal threshold, I just set it to 4.8. And then I broke the chain in the special threshold and I set the chroma to 6.4. And that's because 
If I were to just look at right here, I'm going to punch in and post and you can see it. So this is before you see all this chromatic noise. We don't have that in this frame. We have a lot of grain here, but not noise. Whereas we have tons of RGB noise here. So this takes care of that. And then I went and used film box to add my halation and grain only. And just look at the texture. You know why? Because I went in here and I selected super 35 millimeter 250D. So I'm even selecting the right film negative grain and you can see how close it puts us. Like look at the grain texture right here and then look at the grain texture right here. Look at these two images from where we started to where we ended up though. I feel like my image might just have like a touch of more magenta. So if I go under look adjustment and HDR palette, use my offset and kind of just I just added literally a hint of yellow. And personally, I don't mind it. I feel like it, it kind of goes. So I'm going to do before and after. I'm just like really scoping it out, right? Like I'm looking at a bunch of different areas in the frame to just see how close we are. And I feel like, I feel like the vibe is there. The texture is there. The deep colors that you get from film negative are there. And I'm going to just park it there. I'm not going to obsess over it anymore. And let's just quickly go through where we started to where we ended up. We started with our film print emulation, Kodak 2383, and it converted the image from DaVinci White Gamut to Rec. 709. This and this lot right here are both available in my free webinar. Link is in the description. And then this is your Kodak 250D film negative. And then we went ahead and did our primaries. And this is where majority of the magic happened. This was a very subtle effect, but did a huge job and then applied the noise reduction and uh, texture is very, very important when you're creating looks like that. And you can even see it right here, what the halation is doing. So look at this area and this picture frame. It makes it look so organic and film like, and this is near impossible to achieve otherwise. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, smash the like button so we can reach more people. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified about the future videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.